so amazing and we're so thankful I um, but I just want to talk to you this evening about significant people what happens when people walk into our lives what's the impact of those who walk into our lives I know I in my teenage years I grew up with a uh, spending time with a very good friend of mine uh, we'd go uh, climbing together I think we climbed just about every peak in Wales and uh, the Lake District and, uh, and Scotland and we uh, did rock climbing and we were both competitive swimmers we used to train together and uh, really good friends but and that was great it's great to have a friend like that but the, the best thing he did for me was when he came to my place one time and knocked at the door and he had this young lady on his arm and uh, I, I, the, moment, the moment she saw me, she realized uh, she was with the wrong person. And uh, that's how my best friend brought Jeannie to my door. So uh, what a blessing that's been uh, in my life to have uh, now. Uh, as Des, Des said, I'm often well known for the fact that I'm Jeannie's husband. Oh, you're Jeannie Knott's husband. Yeah, that's me. That's my claim to fame. Oh, you're Rick Knott's father. Yes, that's me. That's my claim to fame, you know. And I don't mind living in uh, the reflected uh, glory of others. It's quite a good place to be. And uh, I, I love that. It's amazing. But I just want to talk to you about one particular person. It was interesting as we were driving up uh, from, uh, from Wellington. Uh, we came on the road from Taupo to Rotorua. We were in, uh, preaching in Rotorua that first weekend. And as we came past uh, Benny B, uh, it's the honey place uh, on the way between uh, Taupo and Rotorua, it brought back a memory to me of someone who'd had a huge impact in my life as well. Uh, when we were in Kawara, uh, we were I was teaching there, and uh, I, being an adventurer, I saw this guy hang gliding off the top of Mount Edgecombe, and uh, so it led to a, a series of events where I was going to be joining him for a weekend at the Busy Bee and uh, we were going to hang glide together. Uh, but things didn't work out, I didn't get there. On the Sunday evening, Jeannie was out, I was sitting home, I thought, with the, looking after the children, so I turned the TV on and this guy had been killed uh, at the hang gliding rally. He'd, uh, done a 360, lost more height than he realized, flew into some high tension wires and was electrocuted. So I saw that news and at that moment uh, this thought came into my head that God was looking after me. And uh, I'd mean, been through many scrapes, climbed out of wrecked motor cars, almost drowned myself, all sorts of things, but never had that occurred to me before. But it was a, a persistent thought in my mind that I couldn't shake it off. And so when Jeannie came home, we sat and we talked about it. And uh, she was amazed that I was talking about such a thing because it wasn't my style. Um, but I said, I think we should pray. And Jeannie said, well, we're not in church. How can we pray? So that was our understanding of where prayer happened. And uh, so in the end, we prayed. And the power of God completely enveloped our lives. And that was an unforgettable moment. And for me, the most important person who can ever walk into our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ. When he walks in, everything changes. Uh, I, it's an unforgettable moment. I, I remember you know, liquid love pouring from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I, I knew I could never go back to who I was. Um, in fact, I, I went to work that morning uh, teaching on the Monday morning and in the staff meeting I stood up and announced to everyone that I met God last night uh, as you can imagine it was warmly received everyone fell on their faces and gave their life to Jesus no what actually happened was I had a corner of the staff room all to myself for quite a while but uh, it did create huge opportunities uh, to minister to young people in the college and we had quite a revival there during that time, which was a great privilege. But I want to talk to you about a character. He's in uh, 2 Kings chapter 5 by the name of Naaman. And uh, Naaman uh, was a general. 
he was responsible, uh, he was from uh, Aram, and he would have been from the city of Aleppo. Aleppo would have been the capital city, which is now in Syria, and been very much in the news in recent years. Uh, so that's where he would have been from. And he was, um, he was in, on good terms with the king, uh, because he'd been successful in his, uh, in his raids on Israel. And, uh, but the problem that he had, although he was well loved by the king, although he was in a very uh, cool position, being in charge of the army and everything else, he had leprosy. And uh, he, mm, we, we, you know, life's good except for one thing sometimes in our lives. For him it was leprosy which, you know, symbolizes sin in our lives. But his days were already written in God's book. God had already ordained the walk that he was going to be on, the way he was going to walk, and the way it was going to change his life. It actually came to the point where he was able to surrender himself to the true God, the God of Israel, and no longer worship the idols. That was the end of his journey. But I want to talk more about the impact of what he had on the people that he met along the way. Sometimes people uh, walk into our lives, and we're glad when they walk out again. But on the way through, they do bless us. You know, I know during our time here at Faith, we were such a blessing to Des and Carly. We helped them to grow the fruits of patience and long-suffering and to grow in their, you know, Christ-like character while we were here with our three children and my mother for a while. So, yes, it was quite a, we were quite a crowd in there. But, uh, yeah, they sort of waved fondly to us as we, as we left for Pyro and said, thank you for helping to change our lives. But as, he was, as Naaman was on his journey, uh, I just want to pray because I believe God wants to speak to each one of us this evening into where we are at and how God wants to move in our lives. So, Father, I just thank you for the privilege of being here this evening. Lord, people walk into our lives and we, we don't want to miss the moments that they bring. Every person can be so significant. Help us to recognize that, Lord, you ordain our lives. People can be a key to our future. They can challenge things within us that you're wanting to challenge. But, Lord, we thank you this evening that you have already preordained our lives. All our days are written in your book, and we don't want to waste any single one of them. So this evening, Holy Spirit, we pray you would speak to each one of us. We believe we are living in incredibly significant days. And we so want to be right in the forefront of all that you planned for us. So bless us and help us, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. And so, concerning Naaman, you know, the scripture declares, you saw me before I was born. How, how amazing is that? How amazing is that? Someone, someone once said, uh, if you'd seen me after I was born, you might not have been so pleased to choose me. I'm pleased you chose me before I was born, yeah? So we were chosen before we were born, and before we messed anything up, God already chose us. But every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. It's as if, it's as if God, because he is outside of time, can look on all of time from beginning to end and watch the parade of humanity walking through. Now, he knows what's coming for us in the future, but he also knows that we have the ability to choose. And when we choose him, he then begins to steer us on the path that is going to be the greatest thing that we could ever do with our lives. There's nothing more satisfying than knowing you are walking with Jesus through life. And please, when we do life, we do it with him, not for him. Amen? We do life with Jesus, and then some cool things are going to happen for him. So when we understand our days are already written. Please don't waste your day. Don't waste your moments. Don't waste your sorrows. Don't waste your trials. Don't waste anything that comes your way. It's all towards the glory of God and the fulfillment of the dream he has for us. Amen? God's provenient grace. I know you can look back through your life and you can see all these things that God did before you even knew him. Amazing how he steered us. Now, Naaman had obviously been steered, and as part of his journey, he had brought back a young Israeli girl as a captive. 
Now, this young Israeli girl was serving him, and she's, she's come on, she's, she's been captured, and she sees he's got leprosy. Now, the natural response was, good job. I hope it spreads all over you. You've taken me from my family. You've done this to me. You've done that to me. And so, but no, what an incredible moment when we see that this young lady, in spite of all that she had suffered, had this heart for her master. And she said to her mistress, the, his wife that she was serving, if only my master would go to Samaria, there's a prophet there who would heal him of his leprosy. Now, that is just an amazing thing for somebody in that situation. There are some of you here right now who have been through some incredibly challenging and difficult times. And I want you to know that out of that, God wants to use you to touch some lives in a way that nobody else can. Because our trials are part of God's shaping, part of God's direction for our lives. And there are some of us with the things we've been through, they empower us to touch the lives around us. And I'm thankful for the ones who've come through the challenges, have no bitterness in their hearts, no resentment, no desire of revenge, but simply a desire to please Jesus. And some of you are right here, right now, and that is going to be the launch pad for your ministry for the future. God uses everything we have been through for his glory. And there are things that you understand, areas where you have received the grace of God or, in the, or you're, in your, you're in the process of receiving the grace of God, in order that you might be completely whole and able to touch the lives around you. We so need you today for our hurting world. There are so many damaged people out there. We need you to fulfill your destiny. And so when this young lady walked, when Naaman actually walked into this young lady's life, it was for her harm, but she turned it around for God's glory. And so as a result, uh, Naaman went off to um, with the king's orders, he was given a stack of gold, silver, ten sets of clothes. This style of the day was one size fits all. Ten sets of beautiful clothes uh, to take. And he was sent to the king with a letter. Now the king, the king of Sumeria got this letter and said, what? Is he trying to start a, a fight? Is he going to start a war? How am I going to heal anybody? But of course, if you know anything about Elisha, he knew everything that was going on everywhere. Uh, he, they said he was, it's like Elisha's got a little bird that sits in everybody's room and he knows what they're on about. Amen? That's why it makes me nervous when I'm around prophets. Do you feel nervous around prophets? Yeah. And uh, so when they said, well, look, you know, Elisha heard about it and he said, no, look, Come on, send him over here. And so this is another moment when Naaman walks into Elisha's life. Let's, let's remember who Elisha is. I'd love to have his cloak. I don't know what he did with his cloak, but I wish it was still around. I'd love to have his cloak, amen? You can go to smite the waters and walk through on dry land, all that sort of thing. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? You know, boom, boom, and walk through. But we don't have one of those, but we do have the, the, the authority and the mantling of the Holy Spirit on our lives. Yeah? But when he came to Elisha, Elisha was not interested. This is a really important guy, high position, with coming with a whole lot of wealth. He could have thought, this is my moment. This is my moment. This is the time to launch my ministry. I'll be known everywhere for this, and look at the money. I'll be able to fund all sorts of wonderful things with all this money, this gold and this silver. And look at the outfits I'll have to preach in. Twelve beautiful sets of clothes. It would be so impressive. No, he did not want any of that. And I praise God for Elisha that he was able to resist those temptations that came with Naaman. Uh, when he came... Uh, Elisha actually sent his servant out. It doesn't say who the servant was. I don't think it was Gehazi because Gehazi gets involved a little bit later on. An unnamed servant. Now Jesus has sent his unnamed servant to us. And his only desire is not to make himself famous, 
but to make Jesus famous. And when the Holy Spirit comes to us as the messenger of Jesus, he is not for our benefit. He is to work through us to make Jesus famous in our world. Amen? Our task on earth is to make Jesus known wherever we go, not to care about whether people remember us or not. Amen? And I, 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 I'm just so thankful that I'm not famous. Amen? It's, it's a great place to be. It saves you from all sorts of troubles and temptations. It really does. And there are some of you here today who have, you know, made choices that you could, have, you could have gone for a life that would have rewarded you in all sorts of material ways, but you've chosen to follow Jesus instead. Some of you have chosen to be here. You could have been done some cool stuff out there making heaps of money, but you are here right now because you have chosen, you want the true wealth, the wealth that only the Spirit of God can give you. Amen? The sort of things that Visa can't buy. Amen? <laughs> in your life. And I thank God for that. And God in the future is going to bring people of significance into this place. He's going to bring people into this place who are going to leave places of incredible influence to come and be trained so that they can be influenced for the kingdom. I'm speaking prophetically over what God is seeing for the future of this place. You're going to bring people of influence in who will be equipped to go out and to have kingdom influence wherever they go. God will take the influence that they have and he will add to it kingdom influence that wherever they go. And so this is going to be a new way that God will move through this place in the way in the future, if you're wondering. Amen? Elisha didn't want the glory. Both of them take us away. Glory and gold both take us away from our hunger and our desire for the true wealth, which is Jesus in our lives. So, so amazing. And I was just telling Des <laughs> before the meeting, you know, when we, when we started in Pyro, and still often today, I seem to get invitations very close to the event. <laughs> I've got it figured. Somebody let them down. Yeah? Okay, we <laughs> get Mike, all right? Yeah, okay, I don't mind the one who's, we can get Mike. That's cool, I'm just happy to go and minister for Jesus, amen? And uh, it always makes me nervous when people give me these big build-ups and say, wow, who are they talking about? That doesn't sound like me, you know, you're always this and that and the other. No, I'm just me. How many people, you know that you're just you? You know, when you, get, you, you get down, you sit on the chair, you know, I'm just me. Anything good that's happened through my life has been Jesus, amen? It's him, the power of his Holy Spirit is for his glory. Praise the Lord, amen? Now, Micah, in the middle of the Micah, there's this wee verse that summarizes God's desire for all of us. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. The Lord has told you what is good. And this is what he requires of you. To do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Do that and all will be well. There will be a smile on the face of Jesus from ear to ear when he sees that happening in our lives. Amen? Now, so Elisha didn't respond. Now, this obviously made Naaman very angry. He gave the instructions to go and wash, go and wash in the Jordan River. Dip yourself seven times in the river. And uh, he said, what? That filthy old river, we've got better rivers back where we are. And he goes off really, really angry. But there are some cool people who are with him. I, I'm just thankful some of the cool people who have been around me in my life. You see, you see, when he got really angry, the soldiers who were with him said, now, Naaman, if he'd asked you to do something incredibly daring and dangerous, you would have loved to do that. But come on, all you have to do is go and dip in the river. And there are some people here right now who have an incredible ability to encourage people and to steer them towards Jesus and to steer them towards accepting Christ, to steer them when they are getting angry with what's happening in life, to come back to Jesus. And I just thank God for the encouragers that we have in our lives. Actually, for us, our kids have been our greatest encouragers. To be honest, when we went to Wellington, 
We were very, very reluctant recruits. God was very clear that we were to go, but we were in Pyro having a wonderful time. And so there are heel marks all the way from Pyro to Wellington, me and the family being dragged to Wellington. And when we got there, I'm so thankful it was the call of God because everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. I thought I was going to lose the church within the first week. Everything just turned to custard when we got there. We were getting a little bit discouraged. And our kids said, we have a little saying over our family. When we speak of Abraham, the King James says, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. So we called ourselves the stagger knots. And so when we were getting discouraged, our kids said to us, come on, we're the stagger knots, Dad. We can do this. And I'm so thankful for people around me who will say, come on, come on, we can do this. And I, I look at my years of ministry and I can think of people who've been exactly like that. My friend Rob. Everybody needs a Rob. When I was, uh, when any, any dream that I had, my, his, his job description was, Mike's dreams become your nightmares, okay? That's a simple job description. And if anyone asks you to be an associate pastor, that's the job description. His dreams become your nightmare. But without him, I couldn't have done half the things that I've done. So he said, yeah, we can do this. Come on, we can do this. And so there are some people, there are some great encouragers here. Please be who you're called to be. Get alongside people to encourage them. Get alongside Des and say, come on, Des, you can write that book. Amen? <laughs> Come on, Dad. You can write that book. Come on. Yeah. We, we, need, we, need, we need a special anointing on you. Amen? The, the thing will just flow, and all of a sudden you'll find yourself with just the stuff. Your fingers are going supernaturally across the keys, and stuff's coming out there like nothing else. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you because that is going to be such an, a huge blessing to so many people. Now, I know it's, you know, it's, it's, it's torrid work, you know, having to sit there and figure it all out and try and recall and get it right. Kim, oh, no, that's not quite what I wanted to say. Come back and say it again. And you go to bed at night and they come, oh, no, I think I'll change that. No, you know, so please, <laughs> just, just keep at it. Amen. It's going to be, it will multiply who you are, you see. It will multiply. When we put things out there, it blesses more than the people here. And so I think we should get you to do some videos and all sorts of things, uh, not on CDs, online, on YouTube. Then it will last. Amen? Des on YouTube. Yeah, come on. The Des channel. Come on. Come on. Why not? Save you all that writing for a start. Praise the Lord. Soldiers around you. Agahazi was unfortunately a different story. I mean, the beautiful thing was that Naaman did go and dip himself seven times in the river and he got beautifully healed. His skin was like a young boy's. Uh, actually, our kids, after we read them this story, uh, one of them, who were quite small at the time, one of them had a veruca in his foot. And we were talking about getting it burned out, which sort of inspired them. Uh, to pray, and uh, they decided to dip his foot in a bowl of water seven times, all off their own bat. Within two days, the Veruca was gone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Faith of a child. Faith of a child, yeah? And uh, don't, don't ever doubt your kids when they tell you things. We were sitting in our room, this is back when I was teaching, new Christian, sitting in our room just worshipping the Lord. And first of all, my daughter said, Dad, why have we all got blue lights on our heads? And then Graham said, I just saw Jesus walk through the door. And we're sort of thinking, oh, cool, you know, cool. Yeah, you know, being, you know, processing people. Two weeks later, we had a visiting preacher who was at our church. The pastor brought her around. She walked into our lounge and said, this is the place, she said. I saw Jesus walk through that door. We all go, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, uh, but, yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. But people around who will encourage us. But Gehazi, unfortunately, uh, he, he sold out. I was thinking about Gehazi, you know. Gehazi, 
Uh, if you think about Elisha, Elisha was the servant of Elijah. And he followed Elijah and he gained a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Now Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. He could have been well in line for the double, double portion of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He could have been one of the great prophets of those days, moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah. Imagine again another twice as many miracles through Gehazi. But no, he, he sold out because he went after Naaman and said, look, uh, actually uh, a couple of disciples have just arrived and they need food, they need money and clothes. And so he got some silver, he got some gold, he got some sets of clothing and he dropped them off at his place on the way back uh, to see Elisha. But Elisha did not miss a thing. He said, Gehazi, where have you been? He said, oh, nowhere. He said, I saw you. I saw you when you went up to Naaman. I saw how he got off his horse. I saw how you took the silver and the gold and the clothing. The leprosy that was on Naaman is now on you. This is an incredibly sad story of someone who got caught up with the blessings that can come with the ministry if you allow them to become yours. And he, he, he absolutely lost a generational blessing that could have flowed to his children and his children's children. Because the leprous were going to be also on his children and his generation. The sin that came upon him began a new ungodly line. And so when we choose the opposite, we begin then to create a godly line. Please do not miss the opportunity to receive the anointing that is in this house. I, I, look, I, I want to encourage you. I, I just had this thought, you know, on Friday night back in our church, we had a half night, a half night of worship and prayer. I think it would be really, really good to have a half night of worship and prayer here for breakthrough and to the supernatural for a whole new wave of the Holy Spirit flowing through this place. Put lots of creativity in it, involve lots of people, lots of creative things going on around the place. But come on, let's believe God for a fresh wave of the Holy Spirit in this place. Because when you go from this place, you need the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to go with you, to go ahead of you, to go before you, to go around you, to be in you, to be upon you, to empower you, to glorify Jesus. We need a fresh break of the out power pouring of the Holy Spirit. There is a generation whose minds are being locked in by social media with all sorts of things that are absolutely contrary to the Word of God. They are sitting in our churches and they are hearing our words, but they are not registering. It's not changing their minds. We need the power of God to break into their world and to show the miracles and signs and wonders that come from heaven above. They will break right into their world and open up their hearts and their mind to the truth of God's Word. There's a generation that needs to be saved and we need a generation out of this place who will go out in the power of the Holy Spirit and know what it is to move in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Come on, this place was born in the supernatural. It is a place of sending supernaturally people out to do things that are beyond the normal possible. God, this place is a place that was totally impossible. It shouldn't be here. It's here because of supernatural intervention. Around the world today, people have done supernatural ministry that's impacted nations for the glory of God. And the time is now, and this time is now, and again and again. And I believe, and I, 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 I get annoyed, I'm sorry, I get annoyed with the YWAMers. Why don't they change their program and come and join in over here and come together? We have one cause, amen? One cause to see God glorified. Come on, change your jolly program and get over here and let's fill this place with people who are hungry for God and hungry for the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Do I hear an amen from the back row? Come on. Anybody with any influence needs to change the thing. We are one campus. We are one people. We are the people of God. We're not separate. We do things differently, but come on, we have the one cause in mind to reach our world for Jesus, see his kingdom come, his will done here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. Let there be a healing of the breach. It's no good just eating together. We're supposed to be worshipping together as well. Amen and amen. I'm probably very naughty saying that, but I just feel I need to say it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, Elisha, you know, my, my passion, I've got a scripture here. Now that I am old and gray, yeah, I'm qualifying now. I'm not sure when old is, but they reckon after 70, you've had your ration and the rest is just, you know, bonus. So I'm on bonus time, okay? Now that I'm old and gray, working on that more and more, do not abandon me, O God. Let me proclaim your power to this new generation, your mighty miracles to all who are to come. That's my passion. That's my desire. Unfortunately, Elisha failed. He failed to raise up a follower. He failed to pass on the anointing. The, the story goes that Aram were raiding again. And uh, there's some Israelis trying to bury a man when these raiders came. And they threw his body into Elisha's tomb. And he was raised from the dead because Elisha's bones were so anointed. God's not interested in anointed bones. We don't need the anointing in heaven. Heaven's got enough anointing without ours, amen? It's ours to give away, ours to pass on. Actually, what God's got in your life in every way always increases the more you give it away. Please, each one of you, whatever your area of gifting, you will grow in your gifting when you take somebody under your wing and begin to sow it into them. Please reproduce yourselves. Uh, I'm, I'm so thankful that there are people who are doing stuff in various places around the world who are part of this place. And even out of our ministry in a smaller way, there are people here and there who are doing significant things for Jesus. And I've had some small part in making that happen. But I want that for you. To reproduce is what we were created, created for. We're called to make disciples. You all have something precious that you can reproduce in somebody else. The world out there needs you to multiply yourself. They need to mu multiply your gift, multiply your gift, multiply who you are. Raise up others under your wing who can go further than you could ever go. Stand on your shoulders and do things that you've only dreamed of. Come on, it's every father's dream, isn't it? We love it, you know. We, we, we have the, our, our kids and we dream of them being better at everything than we were. You know, we didn't make it into the All Blacks, but they're going to make it, you know? <laughs> we have these dreams for our kids, and uh, you, you need some spiritual children that you can raise up under that. But uh, again, you know, just think about the number of people who've gone from this place, who've taken out from this place a rich anointing, and taken what God's given them and multiplied through so many people. <laughs> Paul de Jong, I think you're going to speak at your anniversary thing, isn't he? Yeah. When I, when I came here, Paul was working in the kitchen. <laughs> He's now got a, a tidy little church up there in Auckland. Amen? <laughs> it's amazing what God can do. And there's so many people in the nations doing things today as a result of that. But come on, it, it's not a time to slow down. It's time to speed up. There's extra grace at this end of the age. We need to access the grace of God and all that he has for us at this end of the age and for his glory. And I, I'd just like to, my final picture is follow me and I, I will make you. Oh, can we go to the last slide? Oh, that was a beautiful picture. Anyway, never mind. Oh, this thing? Is that what this is for? All oh, right. I didn't know I was supposed to be. I thought you were doing that for me. I thought they, those were all supposed to be changing. I thought you were doing that. Now I'm doing the preaching. You do the pushing of the little button. Not me. There we are. There you see. Oh, that was quite cool. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Um, we do the following. Jesus does the making. 
he, he's the one who shapes us. And in your situation, Jesus wants to walk into your situation and give you fresh hope in the situation you're involved in right now. He wants to give you a new beginning. He wants to walk in and say, hey, come on, we can, we can start afresh. We can make a whole brand new start. He wants to open a door for you. I always encourage people from Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door, I'll come in. And I'll sit across the table and I'll intimately share with you. It's an incredible invitation. In the same chapter, he says, Behold, I've set before you an open door. I, I believe we'll open our heart in a fresh way to the Lord tonight. He will open a door for us. We, we don't have to go and open doors. He opens the doors. We open this day. So, Lord, please come in. I, I, I want to meet you in a fresh way. I want a fresh encounter with you, Jesus. I want to actually feel like I'm sitting across the table with a face-to-face -face time with you, Jesus. And I know when I do that, you're going to open up my mind, my heart, to the things that you have on your heart for me. And God will open the doors to take you through to the thing that he shows you. Now, these are days that we need intimacy. We need to be walking with Jesus. Please don't get religious. Start doing things for Jesus. That's hard work. That's religiosity. Doing things with Jesus becomes the natural flow of our lives. Our lives are not compartmentalized where we have times with Jesus and I just going to have a bit of me time. Come on. You don't need me time. You need him time. And together, he will show you the most incredible times you could possibly have. Think about the times when you've had those moments of encountering Jesus. Come on, he, he, he doesn't want those to be lost moments in history. He wants to be moments that are daily part of your experience. We can know what it is to walk through life with Jesus. And I believe, come on, I, I always grab this scripture, and I want you to grab it tonight, that he will crown this year with his bounty. He'll crown this year with his, who, who, who'd like him to crown your year with his bounty? Come on, where there's an overflow of the blessing and the power and the presence of God into your life and through your life where doors are opening, opportunities are opening up before all of a sudden you're excited again about living for Jesus. Amen? And saying, oh, well, here we go, another day. Oh, no, it's Monday. Oh, no, it's Tuesday. Whatever. Come on, wherever it is, come on, you can be like Lawrence, the guy, the monk, you know, who he, he, he fell in love with Jesus washing the dishes in the kitchen. Amen? Wherever you are, you can do life with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is wanting to be poured out in an incredible way. Psalm 110 says, My people will offer themselves willingly in the day of his power. Please, don't wait for the power before you offer yourself willingly. Offer yourself willingly and the power of God will come. He's looking for willing volunteers in these days. Amen? Can we stand together? Well, let's just open our hearts up to the Lord, shall we? Lord, we're standing here in your presence right now, opening our hearts to you. Jesus, we believe your word. You have said that if we open our hearts, you will come in and have a time of incredible intimacy with us. I just speak that restoration of intimacy for each one of us today. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we, we are desiring to enter into a time, a season of great intimacy with you. Jesus, we need you more than ever. We need to know your voice. We need to know your authority. We need to meet you in our daily lives, in every situation that we're in. Lord, open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears to all that you have for us in these days ahead. And I, I declare, Lord God, over this place a wonderful, fresh season in the name of Jesus. Lord, it's spring in the natural. Let it be a springtime in the spiritual, Lord God. Lord, let the sound of the turtle dove, Lord, be heard in the mighty name of Jesus. The singing of the birds, Lord God. Let your voice be fresh across this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God. Give us a fresh honeymoon with you. 
Awaken our hearts, awaken our hearts, awaken our hearts, O God. We just pray right across this campus, Lord God, that there will be sovereign moves of your Holy Spirit. You'll surprise people in their room. You'll surprise people when they're out on the field. Surprise people wherever they are with your presence, Lord God. We declare, Lord God, a fresh hunger, a fresh thirst that will flow across this place.